Hi, my name is Jason. I'm going to be presenting to you a presentation on Does Acid Etching Enhance Remodelization of Arrested White Spot Lesions? This article is done by Al Khatib and Tarzari et al. This is an original scientific journey that was published in 2014. So, a white spot lesion, most of you know already know what it is. Uh, you'll see some on this picture over here. In this case, we're talking about an arrested white spot lesion. You know they're very aesthetically challenging. They cause aesthetic problems. Patients come in and they want to get this treated. Also in this picture, you see it in a few other areas as well. They're relatively impermeable, meaning that it's hard for when we have when we look discuss our treatment options, such as fluoride, CPP, ACP, you know it as GC tooth mousse, which is basically calcium. We're making it more porous so that we can get our fluoride or calcium in. We know that it's relatively impermeable, meaning that when we try and get our uh, gels or our creams inside, it's really not going to get in there. And the result of this cause is partial remineralization. So as you can see, only sometimes we try and take our fluoride, but only a little bit will get in. Slide 3 is a white spot lesion. This is an image that I took from Google Sheets. On to the next slide. Slide 4. This is a proposed mechanism to enhance remineralization of acid etching AE. In this picture, I show you an arrested uh, white spot lesion, and we're going to talk about what happens when you put enamel, uh, when you put acid etching onto the surface. We, uh, when we remove the fluoride-rich layer, uh, when we put acid etching, we also remove deposit from enamel pores. We're going to talk about calcium fluoride and other aggregates. And when we do that, when we rub that acid etch onto the surface, we lose the fluoride and the deposits, and we expose the reactive crystals. Now, uh, we have remineralization, and I want you to think about what we said before, the calcium and the fluoride, but we can only put so much in because you'll get a plateau that is reached. And maybe we can get more of this, of these, uh, of the fluoride and the calcium uh, and minerals into the um, into the into the white spot lesion if we do another round of another round of remineralization, another round of acid etching. Slide five is going to talk about uh, concerns that we have with acid etching. So again, I show you my arrested white spot lesion, and when we have acid etching, if we apply it haphazardly. What can happen is, is that we can lose an outer portion of the enamel irreversibly. So maybe if we do it cautiously, we can actually end up enhancing the uh, rate of mineralization. So this is basically the purpose of, the, uh, of this article, to see what we can do to get, um, if we do a second round, is it worth it? And we're going to see. Slide 6 discusses the materials and methods. So. The first thing the researchers did is they got a whole bunch of teeth and they cleaned them and they added uh, acid to a very specific area, what they call a window over here. Uh, the acid they used is called lactic acid methyl gel. Um, and then they wanted to look at each of the teeth un uh, underneath QLF images. Basically, they looked at it uh, to see where they're starting at. And to be specific, they were using 130 premolars and they separated them into five groups. So what do the groups look like? Again, 130 premolars, and we separate into three into five groups. First, we had A, B, C, D, and E, where uh, the first four groups have 30, and the last group has 10. The 10 would be the control, so they're not going to be really exposed to any of the remineralizing solutions. On to slide seven. Slide seven discusses uh, the first round of remineralization. So in round one. We're going to. Uh, we have to first make our solution. So the solution that we're using is called uh, has calcium chloride, 1.5 millimolars, uh, and a pH of of 7.0. The group A, which had 30, we put the uh, the teeth in into the remineralizing solution. Groups B, C, and D are different. Now in groups B, C, and D, they get exposed to various. Uh, uh, to in group B, we see you're exposed to a fluoride slurry, which is uh, Colgate Max Fresh. Uh, which has 1,000 ppm. Uh, the uh, group C uh, is the uh, GC tooth mousse, and group D has a combination. And it's important to note that they would change the remineralizing solutions weekly. The pink, they change it every week, and uh, they would uh, uh, expose the teeth to the uh, to their um, to the fluoride or to the uh, combination or the or the GC mousse. 
they expose it every uh, five, five minutes a day, and after about every eight weeks, they reach the plateau with the results. Slide eight. Now we're preparing for round two of remineralization. What does that mean? So they took a group, uh, they took one of the groups, let's say group A, and they divided it into two parts. Group, subgroup A1, which has 20, subgroup A2 that has 10. For group A, they did acid etching. For group B, uh, for group A1, they did acid etching. For group A2, they didn't do anything. Uh, and then after they have these two subgroups, A1, A2, they repeated the same thing for groups B1, C1, D2, D1, for all the other groups, as you might expect. So in round two remodelization, we basically did the same thing that we did uh, in round one, except we're doing it with the subgroups of 20. So group A1, again, re regular, the pink solution, I'm calling it pink to make it easy to remember. Uh, B1, we exposed to, uh, uh, to fluoride. Uh, C2 was to the GC tooth mousse, and D was a combination. Uh, just like in round one, every week we change the pink remineralizing solution, um, and we uh, take QLF images every week, and we stop uh, after there is no changes. Number 10, the results. So basically, first off, we should know that the pink solution, the remineralizing solution alone itself, will cause an increase in the remineralization rate. And we know that going through both of the rounds of 1 and 2 will also cause an increase. So we're happy with that. But let's get more specific. Number ele uh, Slide 11, the results of phase 1. Let's talk about phase 1 in specific. If you recall, that's when we uh, uh, just just the first round we put into different uh, we categorized the um, 120 teeth into four groups of 30. So what do we see on this table? The most important thing is to see that uh, groups B, C, and D had an increase. They there was a significant increase compared to uh, group A, which only had the remineralizing solution. So that means that if you give the fluoride, the calcium, or the combination, you're going to get more remineralization in that white arrested white spot lesion. About, however, the differences between these three groups, the B, C, and D, it's not statistically significant. This is a little bit of a chart. Basically shows uh, what is represented in the table. Slide 12 shows the results of phase 2. Uh, this is uh, when we use the subgroups. So let's talk about the subgroups. Um, in the subgroups, we see that uh, that there is an increase in the remineralization rate. How um, with C, um, the maximum changes were seen between A and and A groups A and group C. C was the one with the calcium, the GC tooth mousse. Um, however, uh, they said here that um, the uh, edge samples showed better remineralization rate than counterparts, except for group C, which did not reach a significant level. So the difference that we see between C1 and C2, uh, uh, difference between C1 and C2, it, it's it's not that um. Uh, that different. Okay. So this is just a reminder. It's saying that we do get better remineralization rates uh, in the subgroups, meaning that the A1, which had 20, and the A2, which had 10, uh, remember the A1 was the one that undergoed uh, acid remineralization. We do see an increase um, <coughs> in the remineralization rates. So for the discussion, uh, we see that we already know saliva um, doesn't improve the uh, arrested white spot lesion. No patient comes in and says, uh, otherwise we wouldn't have patients in the chair asking for treatment. So remineralization by fluoride is self-limiting, and I want to explain what that means. Uh, when you have fluoride, it, attach, it, it connects, it bonds with the calcium fluoride, and this can basically um, clog up those pores which makes it difficult for calcium and fluoride to get in. So as you can see, the calcium and fluoride are not getting into the, uh, into the white spot lesion, to the depths. So acid etching might be able to uh, remove those, uh, those, um, those uh, uh, plugs, and therefore the calcium and fluoride can get in. Of course, you got to be careful with the acid etch, because sometimes you end up removing part of the uh, tooth, and then you have lots of tooth structure lost. Slide number 14, we're going to discuss the phase 1. So in phase 1, we saw that groups B, C, and D gained significantly more fluorescence than group A. Um, and
and we know that CPP and ACP had the greatest gain, but again, this is no significant, uh, there's no significant difference. So basically, I gave a good check mark to all of them because they're all great, and there isn't one that we prefer uh, more than the other, and uh, also we know that if you combine them, we don't get a better remineralization rate or effect. Continuing along with the phase one discussion, in group B, the fluoride was the one that had the highest amount of gains, but it quickly reached the, uh, the, the plateau within the first th two to three weeks. So we think it's very effective at the beginning of the surface. We're hypothesizing, uh, the researchers hypothesize that there was a uh, some sort of remineral, um, it was kind of a deposition that made it more difficult for further mineralization. Group C, which was the uh, G T uh, G E C tooth mousse, uh, the realization was slower, but again, it continued, it continued longer, but it eventually reached that same plateau. In the phase two, the most important thing is so that the difference between etching and non-etching, the, the subgroups, there was no uh, significant difference. We continue along with our phase two discussion towards the conclusion. We should note that the GC tooth moves gives a steadier rate of remineralization compared to fluoride, but the results, again, are, as we said, similar. Now, if we combine the GC tooth mousse and the, and the uh, fluoride, we're not going to necessarily get a better effect than if we use the Colgate or the uh, GC tooth mousse alone. You're still going to get the same amount of fluoride, as the same amount of mineral deposition that we see here. Now, sometimes if we use acid etching, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's more effective for the fluoride, but it's not as beneficial for the GC tooth mousse. The last thing I'm gonna, uh, I conclude with is that when we use acid, uh, when we use acid etching, we should be using it cautiously because uh, sometimes if we use excessive amounts, there could be a basically a mineral loss, and uh, it could be irreversible. And all that we tried doing is uh, the, all the gains that we wanted ended up with a giant loss. This concludes my presentation, and thank you very much.